Breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ and welcome to those of you just watching third round coverage of the Memorial Tournament from just outside of Columbus at Mirfield Village where John Rahm has been forced to withdraw after testing positive for COVID-19. He was informed about the positive test following his round and his round was absolutely spectacular. An eight under 64 having a six shot lead going into Sunday and now he has been forced to withdraw getting the news there from the PGA Tours uh, medical official. And you have to feel absolutely gutted for John Rahm. He was on his way to winning back-to-back -back Memorial Tournaments, looking to become the just the second player ever do so, joining Tiger Woods. So John Rahm, testing positive for COVID-19, has been forced to withdraw from the tournament. He was leading the tournament at 18 under par, six shots clear of both Colin Morikawa and Patrick Cantlay. So now, Rom is done. Uh, he cannot come back even if he is asymptomatic. He will have to sit out, and he's going to have to sit out for a while. It's looking like June 15th, which that's the week of the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines. So for his sake, you, or you hope that everything is okay health-wise and that he continues to remain asymptomatic so that he can play in the U.S. Open. But that's also a distant thought at this point because it, the business at hand right now is that John Rahm was on his way to winning the Memorial for the second year in a row. And now that has been taken away from him, he came in contact with somebody who tested positive for COVID-19. So he was tested multiple times on this day, obviously leading up to the tournament on Thursday. But now it is Colin Morikawa or Pat Patrick Cantlay's tournament to win going into Sunday. And for more, let's welcome in CBS Sports golf analyst Doug Bell and Sportsline data scientist and host of the First Cut podcast, Rick Gaiman. John Rahm testing positive for COVID-19, forcing him to withdraw from Memorial after carding an 8-under-64 on Saturday, six-shot lead. Doug, I feel gutted for Rahm, who was on his way to winning back-to-back -back Memorial tournaments. Hakeem, I'm absolutely stunned, shocked. You saw that devastating video of John Rahm as he walked off the green there at Muirfield Village and was, and was informed of the test results and realizing that he had to withdraw uh, after just scintillating golf, uh, really for three rounds. And, uh, you know, uh, this is such a shocking story because when you look at the world of sports, uh, I think this is the first time that an athlete has had to withdraw while the competition is going on. Uh, up until today, John Rahm had tested negative, uh, but the initial result today was positive. He was retested and then obviously informed afterwards of the uh, decision and, and the results of the test. And he knows the rules. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, Hakeem. Uh, I was out last week at the Charles Schwab Challenge, and the PGA Tour, as of June 1st, uh, no longer required players if they've been vaccinated uh, to go through the testing process that has been done now for uh, close to a year. And the rules uh, were softening. Uh, no longer were masks required on the PGA Tour. I did not have to be tested, even though I was vaccinated as well. So uh, there was the feeling that things were back to normal on the PGA Tour. And here we sit today with this stunning news that things are not back to normal by any stretch of the imagination. And amazingly, John Rahm, who was running away with the Memorial Tournament, is now sidelined for a period of time, at least two weeks. And I think this puts into question whether or not he will be able to participate in the U.S. Open. But for now, uh, shocking news, not only in golf, but in the world of sports. It is shocking. It's hard to find uh, the words for this one. You know, this is not the uh, the only time that John Rahm has gotten bad news coming off of the 18th green at Mirfield Village. Of course, last year in route to his victory, he was informed of a two-shot penalty. Of course, uh, this this much worse. And I, I think Doug, uh, speaking to not only his experience but uh, our perception of this, that that we were seeing the light at the end of the tunnel a year ago. We had plenty of conversations about what would happen if a guy had a lead heading into Sunday. And and tested positive and we knew he would have to withdraw and John Rom uh, knew that he was in this protocol after having close contact with someone uh, back on Monday. So that was May 31st and, and being tested every single day leading up to this morning. And then, of course, this morning's test uh, coming back positive, it being retested and the retest, of course, coming back positive. So uh, Rom knew 
that there was a chance for this, but he was playing um, the best we have ever seen him play. He, he, he absolutely scorched earth at Nearfield Village on Saturday. He was going to hold a six-shot lead going for his, his sixth PGA Tour victory and become the only person who's ever defended at the Memorial besides Tiger Woods. So it's... Uh, the word that my head is spinning right now. This is a shocking revelation. Well, you mentioned that your head is spinning and you both know that I had tested positive for COVID-19 months ago. And when you test positive, your mind and your entire emotional state, it's surreal because you don't know what to do next. And you kind of saw those emotional feelings on the face of John Rahm. He just became a new father. He was about to see his family from Spain, who he hadn't seen in over a year, in the next week. And so now all of a sudden, that is stopped. He's about to win another tournament. He's about to join Tiger Woods uh, as the only players to win back-to-back -back events here at the Memorial Tournament. So his emotions right now are all over the place. And, and this is, and, and no disrespect to other players on tour, but this is the number three player in the world. And as Doug said, this is a monster story, not only in golf, but in the sports world right now, because here we are sitting thinking this is beyond us, behind us. We've had the vaccination. We have these uh, protocols in place that everybody's safe. And now all of a sudden it hits us right back in the face, Doug. Well, it is amazing. And I'm thinking back, Hakeem, to the World Series. Remember Justin Turner of the yep. Los Angeles Dodgers? tested positive and they had the results while the game was going on and obviously uh, he continued and then and they came out and took the picture with the team and that was a controversial moment at the time uh, and and right now we're gonna have to see where this takes us uh, you saw the video there of John Rahm uh, driving away Play with his caddy. His caddy did not have a mask on. John did put the mask on. Uh, he was playing with Patrick Cantlay, Scotty Scheffler, as they walked off the green before he was approached by PGA Tour officials. Uh, he shook the hands of uh, those gentlemen and their caddies. And so now they're going to have to be tested. Uh, this, this is a domino uh, effect now. Things are all falling uh, into place. And so multiple testing now, and we'll have to see what happens. But uh, really, when you think John Rahm now will no longer participate in this, and, and look at the scoreboard. Morikawa and Cantlay at 1,200 par. Uh, Brandon Grace, Scotty Scheffler are right there, three back, and that brings in Max Homa, and, and even Patrick Reed and Carlos Ortiz and these guys. So uh, really a, a, an amazing and remarkable turn of events. Uh, I hope John Rahm, uh, again, he, he appears asymptomatic right now, but as you mentioned, uh, shocking news, the fact that his family from Spain is flying over. He was going to spend two weeks th with them prior to the United States Open. He does have an infant baby at home. Uh, this is this is an amazing story, and we'll just have to see how it unfolds now in the next 12 to 24 hours because there's going to be more news coming out uh, as we find out more. Yeah, I hate this for him uh, because uh, as, a, as a father myself, I, I know what I had to go through, know when I tested positive, and, and this is just uh, gutting news for John Rahm, and it, it was an absolutely spectacular day for him up until the end of his round. Uh, Rick, I want to take us back here at what he did. He finished up his second round on Saturday, had a hole-in-one on 16. Then another spectacular third round, leading the way by six shots. He had an eight under 64. I mean, he was absolutely dialed in. Rick, what did you see from John Rahm on Saturday? Yeah, the, the juxtaposition of the imagery we saw of him coming off 18 uh, devastated compared to what he did on the golf course on Saturday could not be any more different. As you mentioned, Hakeem, he had to finish his second round, and he did so in, in style. He made an ace on 16. Uh, he birdied 17, and then uh, he absolutely dominated Mirfield Village for uh, the vast majority of his, of his third round. He shot a six under 30 coming in. He played 16 twice today. That's a par three. He did it in three total strokes. Uh, every facet of his game was in complete control. If you want to look at it from the metrics, he led the field in strokes gained off the tee. He led the field in strokes gained approach, and he was second in the field in strokes gained putting. There, there's really nothing that he could have done better uh, over the course of not only the first three rounds, but of this Saturday third round to to, to impress me more. It was an absolutely uh, a dominating day. And then, of course, the the news that he gets off of 18 and it is unfortunate you guys talk about you know the the, the infant at home and he was he's, he's talked all week long about how happy he is and what a great place he's in um and and this is this is certainly a tough pill to swallow it, it indeed is and rick we talked about the fact 
that the U.S. Open is just two weeks away, so he has to remain in isolation through Tuesday, June 15th, which is the week of the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines. And if he continues to stay asymptomatic, which is what we all hope for him so that he's not feeling the effects of COVID and, and what that might impact his body like, you'd have to think at this point, if he wins this tournament, the Memorial, he's one of the favorites to win the U.S. Open, and he's never won a major. And he, again, he was in a great spot here. He's leading the way, and this news comes up. Doug, when you talk about what's next for him, and of course he's got to stay in isolation for a couple weeks here, at this point, do you think he's out of the U.S. Open? Boy, Hakeem, uh, hard to say. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, again, isolation, but if he's asymptomatic, I do think he'll be allowed uh, to practice by himself uh, in a particular area out in San Diego where he and his family live. Uh, but, but again, it, it's not like preparing normally as you would if you uh, were at Torrey Pines uh, uh, getting ready uh, for what would be the United States Open. Phil Mickelson, for example, uh, is taking the next two weeks off to practice at Torrey Pines. He was out today, sent a video out today with the PGA Championship Wanamaker Trophy in the golf cart with him. So he's already preparing for what he hopes uh, is a, a chance to complete the career grand slam but again getting back to john rom and you heard what rick said um very ultra talented player who i think this week was playing the best golf perhaps of his career what he was doing at muirfield village was incredible uh he was hitting fairways at close to 90 percent uh leading the field t to green his iron play was spot on he was seven under par on the par fives so far through three rounds at Muirfield Village. That is a stunning number because those are hard par threes. And obviously the putting uh, was off the chart. So I, I think that's another reason why he was so devastated. Obviously we've talked about his family coming over, uh, his wife and children, but this young man was playing the best golf of his career this week. And that's saying a lot for guys who's had a lot of success. So I, I know he is absolutely crushed because right now, his game is on the shelf for the time being. And to answer your question, I'm not sure if he's going to play in the United States Open, but even if he does, uh, I give his chances. Uh, they're, they're now are basically going down the drain, not having a chance now to prepare normally as you would for a major championship. Well, the last three winners at Mirfield Village were atop the leaderboard. It was the 2020 Memorial Champ John Rahm, followed by the 2019 Memorial Champ Patrick Cantley and Colin Morikawa, who won the 2020 Workday Charity Open. And now both Morikawa and Cantlay are tied for the lead at 12 under par with the withdrawal from John Rahm. And if you asked either guy and any guy in the, in the chase pack here, they wouldn't want to win with John Rahm out of the tournament because they want to beat the best. They want to go chase John Rahm down. Now they don't have to face that on Sunday because of the circumstances. Rick, now going into Sunday, it's either Cantlay or Morikawa. Uh, break this down for us as we head into Sunday now with a certainly much different looking leaderboard. Yeah, certainly bittersweet. These guys are competitors. They want to go out there and they want to earn victories and not that they wouldn't earn it if they go out and shoot the best score of the day on Sunday, but it's certainly going to be a, a weird one for them out there. And, and you look at what Patrick Cantlay has done. He has obviously, as you mentioned, Akeem won at this course before. He's been mired in a bit of a, a, of a slump recently. He has missed probably more cuts in the last two months than he has in the last two years. His, his game has been completely off. He's been trying to uh, switch putters, tried, trying to find something on the greens and he has found that this week now putting much better and injecting himself on the top of the leaderboard and then Colin Colin Morikawa who is already a four-time winner on the PGA Tour he's winning at a prolific rate for having such a, a young career and he's won on uh, three separate Jack Nicholas design courses so this is certainly a, a comfortable spot for him with the victory at the Workday Charity Open he continues to be uh, one of the best players that we have in the world from T to green he nearly made an ace here on Saturday one that he probably should have made it should have dropped he got a little bit unlucky and as long as that putter uh, does not uh, does not act up on Sunday it, it feels like Morikawa should be the favorite to to be crowned your 2021 Memorial <laughs> Champion. Well, John Rahm had the largest 54-hole lead on the PGA Tour this season, surpassing Stuart Sink at the RBC Heritage, but no longer. That is off the board, and I think anybody within five shots of those guys at 1,200 par has an opportunity to win 
the Memorial Championship in Muirfield Village and get the handshake from Jack Nicholas. Shocking, shocking news, but now it's a wide open tournament going into the final round. Indeed it is. Uh, now just uh, some absolutely stunning news. The John Rahm testing positive for COVID-19, having to uh, withdraw from the Memorial Tournament with a six-shot lead. So as now Patrick Cantlay and Colin Morikawa tied for first going into Sunday. Doug Bell, Rick Gaiman joining us here on CBS Sports HQ as we break down the monster news, not only in golf, but in the sports world. And you can bet your bottom dollar that Rick Gaiman and his crew will have an emergency podcast on this news. John Rahm again testing positive for COVID-19 has to withdraw from the Memorial Tournament. Of course, you'll get all kind of takes and perspective from Rick Gaiman and his crew on the First Cut podcast. Download and subscribe today. And you can watch final round coverage of the Memorial on CBS beginning 2.30 Eastern on Sunday. You can also watch on CBSSports.com, the CBS Sports app, and streaming live on Paramount+. Plus. We'll have post-round analysis right here on CBS Sports HQ. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.